Hello everyone, welcome to Mahuan Design EMC channel. In today's session, we're going to introduce methods of doing conducted immunity tests. In the past, if you're familiar with our other videos, we did a demonstration of immunity tests using a small antenna and using TEM cell device. And we also did a session using a homemade bulk current injection method. Now, in today's session, we're going to do a conducting immunity test based on a device called coupling decoupling network, or in short, CDN, which is placed here. And uh, the biggest advantage of using a CDN for immunity test is it has near perfect decoupling between the mains and the device on the test and it has minimum environmental stress, which means when you inject the noise, you don't have to worry too much about you know, uh, the equipment nearby compared to other uh, radiated immunity test methods. And most important of all, it requires minimum power, which means with a, you know, a reasonably good power amplifier, you can achieve a very high level of disturbance to your EUT. In that sense, it is a very useful tool to test uh, your PCB or product against immunity issue to give you a good confidence level before you send the product into the market or for uh, compliance testing. So let's have a look. Here shows you the uh, simplified system diagram of a CDN immunity test. What is important is you need a signal source which is capable of generating the noise reference in the frequency range you are interested. Then you need an RF power amplifier. Its job mainly is just to amplify the noise source. To protect the RF amplifier, often we need a 6 dB or 3 dB attenuator. This is because sometimes due to the mismatch, the fats of the RF power amplifier can be destroyed by the uh, reflecting wave. And of course, for this immunity test, we need a CDN. And as you can see here, the CDN is bonded on the ground plane using a good electric connection. The EUT sits on the 10 centimeter tall insulation support. And what is important is between the CDN and EUT, this length of uh, cable should be less than 30 centimeters. Normally it's between 20 centimeters and 30 centimeters. Okay, then depends on your power amplifier level, you could achieve uh, level 1, 2 or 3, really depends on the output power of your RF amplifier. And you can select either continuous wave, such as this, or uh, AM modulation, amplitude modulated waveform, such as this. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, our test setup. Now let's have a look at the actual test setup. In this case, the DUT is a small PCB using the fire alarm system. It is a mains powered product which only has live and neutral connections. Because it is a mains powered product, we need to be extra cautious when it comes to high voltage safety. Again, in this case, the high voltage safety is accomplished by having the earth leads solidly bonded to the test ground plane and the chassis of the CDM. Back to where the DUT is, as you can see, the DUT needs to be put on a 10 centimeter tall insulation support over the test ground plane. That is according to the test standards. Between the CDN and DUT, the cable length is important. According to the standard, this length needs to be kept within 30 centimeters long, okay? Since this product has only live and neutral connections, therefore, we, need, we use a M2 type CDN to test it. If the DUT has live, neutral and earth, we need to select M3 type CDN for um, products that requires an earth connection, okay? The CDN, chassis of the CDN um, is bonded to the test ground plane uh, via these uh, uh, screw connections on the panel here and also on the panels here. We talked about high voltage safety connection here and here you just simply connect live and neutral to the AE side, right? So in order to inject RF noise into the CDN then passing to the DUT, we need uh, RF amplifier signals uh, to the CDN. This is 
done by having an RF amplifier here. So the RF amplifier in this case has the capability of uh, sweeping between 10 megahertz and 1 gigahertz and has maximum output power of 37 dBm. Notice here we have a 6 dB attenuator placed on the output side of the RF amplifier. This is to prevent uh, impedance mismatch. For this test, we need to enable modulation and we need to select AM modulation at 1 kilohertz. So these, are, have, these all have been selected correctly. To drive the RF uh, power amplifier, in this case, we're using a signaling spectrum analyzer tracking generator uh, output to generate noise. The whole process is controlled again by EMC View software. Quickly explain how how this works. So as you can see in the software, we have um, many options. Um, for this type of test, often we are uh, sweeping between a defined starting frequency and stop frequency. And you can also define dual time and amplitude. Just have a quick test. If we select 15 megahertz single frequency uh, scanning, and we put the amplitude as 0 dBm. So the 0 dBm is the 0 dBm output of the tracking generator of a spectrum analyzer, right? So as you can see, we already selected on. Now let's look at the spectrum analyzer. Spectrum analyzer tracking generator is on, and it basically does a zero span. As you can see, zero span span output, right? And you can see its output um, a 15 megahertz uh, signals, right? So if you connect uh, oscilloscope to this uh, output port, you will simply see a 15 megahertz uh, sinusoidal waveform uh, with the amplitude uh, which represents zero dBm, basically. And of course, the signals gets into the power amplifier and then will be amplified with AM modulation enabled, okay? Obviously, with different power injected into the CDN, you can achieve different levels of disturbance. This is all defined in standards. As you can see here, you can look at the table and decide which level you want to inject into your EUT uh, to test. Also, uh, worth mentioning is that because in this case, the standard defines AM modulation, but it's not always the case. Sometimes you can just inject continuous wave, but there is a difference between uh, the uh, level when you are injecting continuous wave and AM modulated uh, wave, obviously because of the, the natural of the wave shape. So as you can see here, um, there's, there's about um, 5.1 dB uh, difference. Uh, so you have to take that into consideration. So with the test setup we have, which we use TBMDA3 RF amplifier, that has about 37 dBm output, and we're using AM modulation with a 6 dB attenuator. So we can see that with the test setup we have, we can confidently achieve level two uh, immunity. Obviously, if you really want to push it a little bit further, you can always try to remove that 6 dB uh, attenuator. So that will give you close to 38 dBm. So basically, you can really push the limit to level three if you really want to test your uh, unit to that kind of level. So in this test, we are just doing level two tests and we'll see what happens, okay? Okay, ready to go. Now we need to um, switch on the RF power amplifier and then start scanning. And we're going to scan between 100 megahertz and 200 megahertz with AM enabled as our modulation method. So now I'm going to plug in the power. So expecting some loud sounds coming through. Okay, switch it on and start scanning. Now it stopped because at certain frequency range, it has problems. I think we identify where the problem is, which is 100 megahertz and between 100 megahertz and 180 megahertz. So we already identify where the system is prone to immunity disturbance. So we'll have uh, plans to troubleshoot and fix the issues. Okay.